welcome man welcome back to the channel oh what i say 2012 chrysler 200 no start guys uh y'all know the drill man three things you need to start fuel what is it fuel spark uh oh i get a brain freeze every now and then like everybody else and combustion what i th in other words what i think i'm lacking causing no start is fuel all right so i talk about this all the time we can that is the easiest one you can basically simulate okay in other words you can create an imaginary fuel all right you can spray fuel down there just in case you suspect your pump it's not doing what it's supposed to do now i went up this car was dead so i had my jump box already down there but uh i come down jump it off and find out i'm just spinning over sounds like it's not getting any fuel that's why i went and got this however as you notice or as you can see i did not bring my test light normally i bring my test light in order to see if i'm even getting power supply to the fuel pump remember guys doesn't matter uh what kind of fuel pump this is if it's not getting 12 volts in ground it's never going to start so i left my test light up there number one reason is because i can turn the key on and i can hear and feel the pump running for its two second prime that it's required to do remember guys the average car these days uh required to give you a two second primer when you turn the key on that's to prime the fuel system up, get it ready for starting. I heard that. I turn the key on, I hear bzzz. So what that tells me is I'm pretty much getting my 12 volts and ground there merely because I can audibly hear the fuel pump running. Okay, so the fuel pump would not run if you're not getting 12 volts of ground. So where I'm at now, I went upstairs and got my screwdriver to remove this intake hose. I'm merely about to simulate fuel presence now some people will say jt well you know i'll hook right there and uh that you can go that route too whatever way fits you in the car you're working on okay this is a little four cylinder so uh you can you can some people will even tie in a fuel pressure gauge that is the proper way to do this guys you should have a fuel pressure gauge to monitor your fuel pressure level all right but uh I don't have the connections built yet, so I'm gonna go this route. Let me get this hose off, and I'm gonna spray fuel down there. What I'm doing is simulating fuel presence, okay? Not uh, pressure, but presence. Presence. Hoping I'm pronouncing that right. All right, so let me get this hose off, and we're gonna see what happens. Stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, let me get this thing some 12 volts. And we're going to go see what happened. Like I say, I can hear the pump running. Now, if you hear the pump running, one would think you likely should be getting. But you don't really know how much pressure you're getting. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh-oh. It's not a fuel problem, guys. Oh, no. All right. Gotta go to plan B. Now again, that could have been easily verified using a fuel pressure gate. You could have just avoided this whole wasted 15 minutes that I just did on this by merely hooking up a fuel gauge, turning your key on, and see if you have at least 50 PSI pressure. All right, I just wasted 15 minutes of you, not even 15. According to this video, I wasted three minutes of you guys live that you can't get back. And I wanna go on record apologizing for that. <laughs> Okay, guys, but you need to know the diagnostic step anyway. So I take that apology back. All right, now, uh, I'm up to plan B simply because based on what I just did, and I'm not even trying, still not even trying to start. I don't think it's fuel. Uh, it's a fuel. Uh, it's a fuel issue. Okay, so what what do you do now, JT, Mr. Know-it-all, Mr. So-called chrysler master tech after all this is a chrysler 200 you should know what the hell you're supposed to do next i'm gonna tell you what we should do next guys um i'm outside i really need to get this inside now see i do everything i can possibly outside before i commit to pushing a dead car inside it takes a lot to push one in guys all right now and i should have known something was up this was already in the car so somebody's been working on this car now it's here for the pros to see what's going on. 
Uh, I don't know what plan B is just yet. Just yet. I'm not going to leave you guys in the dark. So what I need you to do is hold tight. Give me a second. Let me regroup. When I come back, we'll figure out what plan B is. All right, hold tight. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. All righty, guys. Uh, welcome back. Uh, what did we leave off? Plan B. Yes, let me, let me explain to you guys something. First of all, I want to apologize. I want to apologize. I may have led you guys astray, okay? I may have missed a step. I may have, should have made what I dubbed plan A, I should have made that plan B. In other words, what I'm about to do now or what I have just done should have been plan A. All right, let me explain to you what I mean. And hear me out. This is a, a sincere and a, an apology, okay? Actually, I cost myself time doing this. Um, now, what I mean by this, take a look at these screenshots right here, guys. All right. Uh, I just decided to scan this thing. Number one, remember it was dead, right? So I had to go get my jump box. You can't scan a car that's dead. I have my junk box hooked up. I decided to hook my scan. Lo and behold, I see a P0335. Ladies and gentlemen, that stands for crank sensor signal. I can't remember the technical name for it. Now, but like I say all the time, guys, that does not mean your crank sensor bad. However, you need to check <laughs> whatever the crank sensor displays to the computer and i did that so what how you how, how you go by doing that guys is you can look under uh if your scan to show data i merely looked on the data and i went to engine rpm okay engine speed they may call it some some scan tools may call it engine rpm engine speed that's what the com crank sensor tells the computer how fast the engine is rotating I think that's where the RPM signal comes from also. It's different cars, guys. So what I saw looking at that data information was this, a big old zero. <laughs> okay. So one of two things, either that crank sensor has failed or the flywheel that the crank sensor read off of literally is not spinning. Now, how likely is that? In fact, it's slim, right? Slim to none, basically, because I can feel compression. I can feel... As I'm spinning it over, hear me out now. As I'm spinning it over, I hear it almost trying to start. So I can sense compression. If that flywheel, just say if the crankshaft were bloke, broke and the flywheel wasn't spinning, you wouldn't, you would probably spin over real fast without any resistant compression feel. That wasn't happening. I felt compression. So I'll disregard the fact that the flywheel or the crankshaft is not broken. <laughs> so we will focus our attention on this crank sensor. Yes, guys, you have to have that signal. Now, this car, it's a dual overhead cam, and it's a cam sensor that monitors each cam shaft. All right? With one of these out of whack, you still can run. You would just have long crank time. But if a crank sensor is out, you may stall, or you may not run at all, which is this case. All right? So, now, we could spend some time going through the circuit, or I can merely grab one of my spare crank sensors, plug it in, and see if the car starts. All right, that's a whole lot quicker, and I can write up an estimate a whole lot quicker and finish my diagnosis. And the number one thing is, <laughs> yes, I will be able to drive it in. All right, guys, so, again, I want to apologize, but at least I'm explaining to you guys where I'm at, right? That is worth more than <sighs> that silly-ass apology I just gave, right? It wasn't even heartfelt or nothing. I had no meaning behind it. It wasn't sincere at all, guys. In fact, I just only done it because I felt I should because I may have wasted a, a little of you guys' time, all right? And some of you guys work on commission. You ain't got, JT, stop wasting my damn time. You don't want your time wasted. I get it. That's why I apologize. Now, let me go and do just that. I hope I got a crank sensor for this model. This crank sensor lives back here behind this little silly shield. Hey, that rhyme. Y'all hear what I just said? So I got to go get a couple of tools. See if I can gain access to it, guys. All right. Uh, ooh, we, uh, do we consider that plan C? No, we disregarded plan A, right? So we up to plan B, technically. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, stay tuned. Well, guys, y'all hear that? It's running. I uh, put my spare crank sensor in there, and now I am running. What does that tell me? Uh-oh. Running bad, but it's running. What is that leaking down there? Oh, uh, yeah, but at least I can get it in the shop, guys. <laughs> uh, so, I'm going to, ooh, y'all hear that? I'm going to end this video, so let me get this thing in the shop and find out what's plan B or plan C. All right, in fact, I'm going to end this video. I'll have to open up another video. 
All right, thanks for watching.